today we are on the doorstep of some very interesting developments in the area of the treatment of mental health symptoms, including depression, anxiety, and insomnia. Our journey starts in 46 AD with Scribonius Largus, who was the physician of a Roman senator. He put a torpedo fish on the senator's head to treat his migraines and on his foot to treat his gout. Now, the torpedo fish uses an electric charge to kill its prey. But with human beings, the small electric charge that they require to kill their prey can actually be very beneficial and not harmful uh, because it's a very low amperage. And so this was the first time that anyone experimented with electrotherapy in history, and it was actually recorded, and it worked. And the senator's migraines went away, and so did his gout. Now, we page forward to the next step, which was in the mid-1800s, there were, there were developments like these, obviously, and you can buy them on eBay, by the way. Um, these were uh, machines that were using a form of electrotherapy, and they were home use devices, but they clearly were not standard of care. Some of them worked, but many of them had uh, issues, and so they fell out of popularity. And the next development is uh, electroconvulsive therapy, which many of you have heard about. Uh, that requires no slide, clearly. And the uh, electroconvulsive therapy is very effective. It works on about 800 to 1,000 milliamps, but the problem is it can cause side effects like seizures and memory loss. So we went from something that was uh, minute to something that was a little bit stronger to something that was very strong. And now, uh, today, we have uh, developments like these. This is called cranial electrotherapy stimulation, or CES. It's actually been in the market since the, since the early 90s. Uh, it, was, it came as a development out of uh, experimentations that were coming, uh, started in Russia in the 1950s and 60s, and then scientists here began to develop devices, which are now uh, cleared by the FDA and had been uh, since the early 1990s. Um, research on these devices began in earnest in the, in the 60s and 70s and have continued, and now there are over 100 pure studies that are showing its effectiveness. Uh, they're often referred to as therables or electroceuticals. Those are the common terms today. And these devices, and, and like this, and devices like them are leading the way in terms of therapeutic uh, practice. And the beneficial aspect is that now that we have great research, these are receiving much more attention and much more acceptability. Most recently, in this past year, one of these devices was involved in a uh, depression study studying bipolar depression specifically. It's the first time a device that has actually been shown to treat bipolar depression, which primarily has been uh, the focus only of pharmaceutical drugs. Now, how do these devices work? They basically use a very uh, low amount of electricity, but they use it in conjunction with very specific frequencies. They can pierce the skull and bone matter very easily without a lot of amplitude, as you saw in, in the other examples, and therefore they can work therapeutically without uh, any serious side effects, and that's the great benefit. So we're using technology uh, in, in very different and more advanced ways today than we have in the past. Another benefit is that they can be combined with wearables like virtual reality, and some of the apps, many of you have apps on your phone. It's like there's a new one called Pause, where there's a little bubble that travels around, and it helps you uh, get over um, uh, depression. Uh, there's Sleep Cycle to measure your sleep. All of these devices and these apps are very effective. But what, the, what we have to do is we have to learn to combine them. Digital health is a fascinating new field. But we, what we need is proven technology to be combined with applications that can actually show effectiveness. So that's, that's where things are going today. Many of you probably wonder why I, as a non-MD and not as a scientist, uh, have a great interest in this subject, and I will tell you. I've suffered from depression all my life. I started suffering when, terribly when I was about 16 years old, and I didn't seek treatment until my middle 30s, which was very common back then. I was then exposed to therapy, to talk therapy, as well as to pharmacological drugs. Some of those drugs worked, but many of them came with very serious side effects, and therefore I stopped using them. And it really wasn't until the accidental discovery of this technology that I was able to treat my own symptoms, and now I would like to help many others do so as well. By 2020, the World Health Organization has determined that depression, and not malaria, and not heart disease, will be the number one cause of illness worldwide. 
That date is only three years away. If we focus on simple concepts and we look at them carefully, we can provide scalable solutions to help change the world. What started in 46 AD with a physician putting a fish on someone's head to treat their symptoms has now transferred into medical devices with research, which can be combined with other technologies to help treat one of the great health issues of, that the world has ever known. Thank you.